Brian recently spent some time eating his way around Birmingham, and although you tasted a lot of Greek food, you fell in love with a very simple dish called Greek chicken from Johnny's Restaurant. That's right. I spent time with Timothy Hansis, who's the chef owner of that restaurant, and of all the things on the menu, he was a little bit shocked that I wanted to discuss Greek baked chicken, because <laughs> it's a relatively simple dish. Tons of herbs, lots of lemon, good hit of garlic, and lots of spices. So we're going to start off with fresh herbs. We're going to use two tablespoons of fresh chopped thyme leaves. Now, we don't want to chop these herbs too finely. You want to have those big pieces on the chicken so you get a real big pop of flavor when you eat it. So we're going to go with two tablespoons of thyme leaves. So next, we have two tablespoons of chopped fresh rosemary. And again, I'm just going to take a couple of passes with my knife and try to avoid doing too much of the rocking motion. So next, we're going to talk about lemon zest. I'm going to use a vegetable peeler, and I'm going to peel off six strips, and they're about three-inch strips, of the zest. So I'm just going to stack those up. Give them a coarse chop. All right, oh, we go with the lemon. It does smell good. I already smell how good that smells. Okay, what's a Greek recipe without a little bit of garlic in it? So we're gonna add five cloves of garlic. Similar to the herbs and lemon zest, coarsely chopped pieces. So five cloves of garlic go in there. Okay, and now we're going to add to that a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, one tablespoon of kosher salt, and then we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of dried oregano. And then we're gonna add one teaspoon of ground coriander, one half teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and finally one half teaspoon of black pepper. So we're just gonna mix that together, and then the marinade is ready to go. Now we're gonna talk about the chicken. So this recipe calls for three pounds of chicken parts. And whenever a recipe calls for that, it's best to reach for a four pound chicken and break it down yourself into its individual pieces. Here we have our four pound chicken, and we're just gonna do a quick breakdown with this. I'm gonna go leg quarters, wings, breast. All right. Okay. So I like to first hold the chicken up here, kind of at an angle, and just nick away at the skin here between the thigh and the breast. And then I'll pull the chicken back mm -hmm. and then run the tip of my bony knife right down through that joint and set that aside. And we'll do the same on the second side. Again, use the weight of the chicken and kind of nick away at this joint right here around the wing, and that pops right off. Then I'll switch knives to something a little bit more sturdy. So I'm going to go on either side of the breast here, really cutting through the rib cage all the way down. So I'll work with one side at a time. And then I'll spin it around and do the second side. And we can discard this or use it for mm. chicken stock. Now we're going to break down these larger quarters into individual pieces. So we're going to split the breast right in half. We're going to score the meat until we feel that bone. And then we're going to put some pressure on the tip of the knife and rock the back of it right through the bone. Then for the thighs and the legs, there's a little seam of fat that runs right here. And if you could just run your knife right on top of that, it'll go right in between that joint. And now's a good time to trim up any excess fat from those thighs. And again, we'll do that with the second leg quarter. Then we're just gonna remove the wing tip here. Mm -hmm. So you can just pop right through that joint. Oh, those are so good for stock. They have so much cartilage in them. Mm -hmm. And then the same with the second wing. So this next move is something that I started doing at home because I don't have a lot of time to marinate chicken when I get home from work. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna score the chicken to let the marinade penetrate a little bit deeper and get in contact with that meat. So for the breast, we're gonna cut three half inch deep slashes straight across. We wanna increase the surface area of the meat so the marinade's really gonna stick. And with the thighs, we're gonna make two slashes perpendicular to the bone, again, about a half inch deep. Okay, and for the drumsticks, we're gonna do two half inch deep slashes, one on either side. The wings are small enough and thin enough that the marinade will work on those without having to tinker with them at all. All right. So, all right, so we're just gonna toss all this chicken in the marinade. You can see already those little slashes are taking in all of those big chunks of herbs and garlic. We're gonna cover it with plastic wrap and we're gonna refrigerate it for at least 30 minutes or up to two hours. But you don't wanna go too much longer than two hours because there's a ton of salt in here and it can get a little bit salty. It's been two hours and we're ready to cook off our chicken. So we're gonna cook the chicken in the skillet. One, because the chicken's gonna be a little bit more crowded in the pan than it would be in a baking dish. So all the juices that come from the marinade and then come out of the chicken are gonna create a nice pan sauce for us at the end. They're not gonna evaporate in the oven. Number two, the skillet is broiler safe. We're gonna broil the chicken at the end to get some nice browning on the skin. And the third, the skillet's got this nifty little handle here. Nifty. I don't, I don't know if you <laughs> noticed that, but it's easier to move in and out of the oven. Okay, so the chicken is all positioned in there, and we're gonna take all of our leftover marinade, and we're gonna make sure we get all of that into the skillet. Oh, yeah. 
We've got the oven rack set about six inches from the broiler element, because again, we're gonna broil at the end. And the oven temperature is currently at 425 degrees. We're gonna bake the chicken for about 30 minutes until the breast meat hits 160, and then dark meat hits 175 degrees. It's been 30 minutes and we're ready to take a look at our chicken and give it a temp. Oh, it smells good. Julie, do you mind turning that oven to broil for me, please? You got it. All right, Julie, we're gonna temp the thickest part of these chicken breasts and we're looking for 160 degrees. We're at 161 and that's perfect. Pretty good. So now we're ready to broil the chicken, but before we go under the broiler, we're gonna spoon some of these pan juices which contain a lot of olive oil and chicken fat over top of the chicken. That's gonna help the chicken brown really nicely under the broiler. All right, so we've given each of these pieces a little bath in its own chicken fat and olive oil. Goodness. And we could throw them back under the broiler for about three minutes. And we want to pay close attention because like anything you're broiling, it can go from perfect <laughs> to burnt in a matter of seconds. So we'll keep an eye on it. And if we see that it's browning unevenly, we'll just give the skillet a bit of a rotation. Sounds good. Joya, let's take a look at this gorgeous looking well-browned chicken. That is beautiful. We are gonna let this chicken rest in these pan juices for a good 10 minutes. And as it rests, some more of those juices will come out and really fortify our pan sauce. Julia, this chicken is ready to be plattered mm. and it smells good, huh? It looks gorgeous. So we are gonna put these pieces on the platter and then we have our delicious pan juices here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add a tablespoon of juice from that lemon we zested earlier to really send it back mm. to Alabama. <laughs> Spoon these pan juices right over top of the chicken. So this good. dish is a looker. All right. Can I serve you a piece? Absolutely. So this is great to eat with like crusty bread or boiled mm -hmm. potatoes. So all those juices could soak in. All right, first I'm gonna dive right into this chicken thigh. Mmm, that is good. So simple. Big flavor. The herbs really don't overpower. And the sauce or the jus is lovely with that hit of lemon. Yeah, it's a really good balance of everything. You get a little bit of heat from the red pepper flakes. The lemon really carries it. Brian, this is delicious. Thank you. Well done. So if you want to make this simple but flavorful recipe for baked chicken, start by making a marinade. Cut a chicken up into parts, then cut deep slashes right into the meat before rubbing with the marinade. Arrange the chicken skin side up, roast it, then finish under the broiler. From Cook's Country, an incredibly easy recipe for Greek chicken. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>